Hello, folks. Welcome back to World War II TV. And my first question is, did you miss me? It's been 10 days or something since my last stream. So it's great to be back. I've got a little bit of a cold, but it's just about going away. So that's really good. So I'm glad those of you who are regulars, you waded through some of the back catalogue over the last few days while I wasn't doing live streaming. So it's really nice to see some comments and some of the older shows being rediscovered and recircled. So that's really good. If you are new to World War II TV, maybe you've come in via promotions on Instagram from Time Ghost. Welcome to my channel. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe. All the information you need about my guests is in the description below. And we are here for Arnhem Week. So we did an Arnhem Week last year, and I wasn't going to do it this year. Then I thought, you know what, I will. But I was going to try and find some different subjects. So one of the things that I had never really thought about, thought about before was the bombardments in advance of Operation Market Garden. So my guest today from the Netherlands has written, and I'm going to hold it up now, this book. It is only available in Dutch, although there's plenty of images in there that are fantastic. They were all over the sky, which is the title of today's show. And it's about the B-17s and indeed P-47s that came over to the Netherlands in advance and during Market Garden to pave the way for the airborne operations. So my guest, Anton, Anton Mayers, is a former EOD officer in the Netherlands Army. He's written about EOD in World War II, and then he turned his attention to the bombardment. So I'm going to bring him in now. So uh, good evening, Anton. How are you today? Okay, uh, Paul, thank you. I'm okay. Good. So... I said about the introduction about you were a former EOD officer. So you were dealing with ordnance on the ground during your military career. What got you interested in examining the market garden bombardments? Because it's something that doesn't really get mentioned. I checked a few of the books about market garden and it gets a line or two or a paragraph or it gets ignored. So I know, obviously, being Dutch, the civilian casualties was important to you to cover. But, but what was your first um, reason for, for, for studying this 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 overlooked aspect? Uh, that was uh, I had to do a uh, historical investigation uh, for the Netherlands Army in behalf of the community of Graven, and um, we found out that there was a, a bombardment on the 17th of September. Then uh, didn't know about that nothing so uh, we asked some uh, uh, guys what has happened and they said you have to go to the the u.s uh, forces uh, library and uh, take a look and then i get a huge pile of inf information about uh, the bombard was on the 17th of september and so then i saw there was more than only one bombing uh, at the bridge at grave and that uh, then I was looking, like you said, uh, in the books, and there was nothing, one or two uh, mentions that there was a bombardment, and that was all. So then I started investigating this matter. And so well, the, uh, well, we're glad, we're very glad you did. And I, I hope that at some point the book will be available in English. Uh, mm -hmm. If in, in the meantime it is available in Dutch, and the link to the Flying Pencil which is the website where the publisher uh, has, has it listed, is in the description below. But I, my guest, Anton, has come with a massive great PowerPoint today with loads of images, so we've got plenty of stuff to go through. So I'm going to hand over to Anton now for the presentation. Folks, for those of you watching, I think there's so much detail in this presentation, you won't need to ask questions because I, I bet this, the question you're going to ask will come up in a slide of you uh, down the line. So what we'll do today is we'll kind of do questions at the end. If you have any big, big questions about the bombardments and how it affects the operation, we'll do it there. But feel free to jump in with questions if you want. But I'll hand over to Anton now, and I will jump in every now and then with, with a couple of comments. But we could talk about the bombardments that were happening, of course. Well, just had already been up underway 78 years ago at the beginning of this week. So, so over to you, Anton. Okay, thank you. Uh, first, uh, excuse my English because that's not my uh, native uh, language. So, Paul, maybe you uh, have to uh, step in sometimes for a word or two. But it's fine so far. Okay. Um, the American bombardments uh, during Operation, Operation Margaret Garning in September 1944. Um, there's my book about. And uh, why this book? Uh, yeah, we mentioned already before. It's only. Uh, uh, in literature a little bit um, and for the Netherlands it was the largest uh, number of aerial bombs dropped in one operation in one single operation uh, and the targets was not one but were 122 different aiming points dispersed over the Netherlands and they were deployed by uh, heavy bombers at the B-17s 
uh, against very small targets and that were flak uh, targets eh? so uh, german anti aircraft uh, deployment maybe as large as a half football field so very small targets for very heavy strategic bombers um my presentation will cover uh, a little bit about the first meetings the air support meetings for operation market and um, because i'm a eud officer and also an ammunition technician i have to talk about the bombs and the rockets that were used by the b-17s and the p-47s and then a little bit about the, the operation order himself and then what may be very interesting is the routes flown by the first and the third uh, bomb division um, because there were 122 areas to bomb that's too much uh, of uh, 42 areas 122 aiming points uh, i will um, cover tw 12 of these areas in this uh, powerpoint uh, and then we will see what the results were uh, by the b-70s and the p-47s the losses of this uh, uh, airplanes and of course the civilian casualties uh, as far as uh, have i have found out so uh, let me start with the presentation the first air support meeting uh, for Operation Market was uh, at the headquarters of the Allied Expeditionary Air Force Wheel at the uh, Bentry Priory. Uh, mostly know that Bentry Priory is uh, the, the area where the um, Battle of Britain was fought out, uh, the headquarters, uh, Royal Air Force Stanmore. And the first meeting was on the 12th of September at 1600 hours. Um, you see the Participants were United States Strategic Air Force, Royal Air Force Bomber Command, Allied Expeditionary Air Force, Air Defense of Great Britain, 8th Air Force, 9th Air Force, 2nd Tactical Air Force, Coastal Command, and of course, 1st uh, Allied Airborne Army, and some others. And the picture you see on the right side is not from that meeting that was somewhere in, uh, in August, but uh, it will have been the same uh, setting i think mm -hmm. um, at this first meeting on the 12th of september uh, there was announced that the first airborne landings were scheduled for the 23rd of september uh, and then they uh, they did some discussion should it be an, a night uh, uh, airborne operation or day or airborne operation um, the planning was that nine bomber command of the United States Army Air Force uh, should attack the flag. Uh, so the German uh, anti-aircraft guns just before the first lift. Uh, Bomber Command uh, should attack uh, some uh, German day fighter airfields, and they did that on the 16th, on the 17th. Eight Air Force, they uh, should escort the lifts to the dropping zones and the landing zones, no more. And the second half uh, should give uh, close air support and do some arms reconnaissance and also some aerial cover of the landing grounds um, and say they should uh, bombard some german barracks north of nijmegen 35 minutes before h hour now this um, bombing on the by second half was at arnhem by mosquitoes uh, nijmegen and uh, and clay by mosquitoes and Ede by mitchells and bostons in the afternoon uh, but it was for only planning. Um, in the same evening, uh, there was an, uh, an telex sent to all these uh, uh, <laughs> participants. Um, that landing should start not on the 23rd, but on the 70th of September. So that was the, the first time they, uh, they changed the date. And the second uh, meeting at Bentley Priory was on the 15th. So you can see it was all hush hush. Uh, the, the planning was as everybody knows for market darling very uh, short but the most most of the planning was uh, based on the operation planning of linnet and comet that was before um but on the 16 and that's very strange uh by headquarters uh allied air, uh, air force rear they the saying was the schedule for 17 18 and 19 so they know on the 16 all that they should have three lifts instead of one and you know all why that was but the strange thing was that headquarters 8 air force 
they sent an operation order on the in the morning of December of the 16th that in that afternoon 1800 double bridge summertime all the three uh, bomb divisions of uh, this air force should bomb targets in the Netherlands and the first bomb division should uh, do in the eastern part of uh, the province of North Brabant and I have uh, lined up that with blue the second bomb division should do the west and the middle part of the province of North Brabant and the third bomb division should do uh, the area near Arnhem, Arnhem. But in the same evening, there was a change because the bombarding should be done just prior on the, on the landings. So this order was uh, cancelled in the afternoon uh, and they uh, were mentioned in the, in the uh, operation order, the new operation orders, keep the bombs in the planes that will be happening tomorrow, the 17th. Um, and then on the morning of the, the 17th, the first and the third bomb division have done the bombings uh, of, the, of the targets. Only the, the third bomb the, of the second bomb division, um, they were cancelled. And the two combat wings of this uh, second bomb division, uh, they had B-24s. Uh, and have to do the low level supply flights for the 82nd and the 101st Airborne Division uh, at Hoosbeek and at some the landing fields. So the, the only one who had uh, doing the bombing from the flag targets on the 17th was the 1st and the 3rd Bomb Division and they had only B-17s in the armament. So just, just to ask you one question, you talked about the meeting a few days earlier. Yeah. Were, were the people at the meeting were they presented this bomb pack, bomb plan kind of already packaged? It was already discussed, decided by the, uh, the 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 commanders of the airborne operation, or were they allowed to kind of offer their own input to it as well? Because, as you said yourself, it's not very long very long in time to plan an operation like this, and particularly as you'll get to the accuracy they're expecting from 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 Eighth Air Force B seventeens. Did they did they did they fight back against the plan? Did they offer any criticism of it? Did they just go along with it? Just give give us an idea of how much influence they had in the plan they were given. I think uh, I didn't uh, did some investigation of that, but if, if you see on the fifteen, the plans were changed. Yeah, and they know there was a lot of uh, flak and uh, mobile flak in the Nijmegen Arnhem area, and they know. Uh, that this flag was also uh, could also be used against the ground targets, and I think that uh, the commanders of uh, the the market part could this uh, make their own decision right. how to employ this. But I'm not so sure. But I think so. Okay, thanks. Uh, okay, but uh, about uh, the the P47s, and, and they were not only. Uh, uh, used at the 17th, but also the 18th, 20th and 23rd of September uh, with bomb attacks. My book is only about the bombing, so not the, it covers not the, the other uh, aircraft, uh, so uh, no, not, nothing about fighter command, etc., etc. Uh, and there was also um, one um, fighter group of the 9th Air Force that was uh, in action uh, with rockets in that area, of in, in, the, in this period. And um, so we see a lot of bombing and some uh, rocket attacks uh, on the on the uh, market, the garden area. Uh, and now something uh, about my, my, my own uh, experience, the ordnance. Now, mostly used was the fragmentation bomb from 260 pounds, the M81. Um, when it detonated above the ground, because the, the nose fuse, the only use a nose fuse on these days, uh, they, uh, they exploded above the ground and it gives, uh, you can see, 6,770 fragments on uh, 12 meters after the detonation and at 300 meters you still have more than 1,000 fragments. And the loading in the, in the B-17s was um, normally 30 bombs um, and some uh, aircraft had 24, but there were more the aircraft with an air commander on board, etc. And you know, first uh, fuel, then bombs, eh? because you have to come uh, back <laughs> after your uh, your bombing. 
Um, now some uh, bomb groups only uh, two they didn't have enough two uh, sixties uh, so M eighty one uh, fragmentation bombs and they used uh, the M one A one clusters with the smaller fragmentation bombs of twenty pounds the M forty ones. Um, you see in a aesthetic show of about one of these clusters with the, the small fragmentation bombs, thirty eight clusters in a B seventeen so. That was 228 of these small bombs. I didn't have found a picture with a B-17, but you can see what's happening when they uh, they drop the bombs uh, from an aircraft. Aircraft they uh, they open very rapidly after uh, after being uh, disposed of. Um, and for the um, one area. And we will see that later. They used the general purpose bombs from the 100 pounders, the M M30s, and they had also 24 and some had 38 bombs in a B-17. Some aircraft uh, used, uh, and that was only the the leader and the deputy leader of an uh, of a flight. They used the sky marker. Uh, that was a chemical bomb uh, filled with titanium tetrachloride. I hope I say it pronounce it okay and the typically of that that stuff is when it uh, and it comes in contact with um, um, the the air it goes over in uh, titanium dioxide and uh, hydrochloric acid and we see that as a white smoke and they were not used to to mark the the aiming point but they were only used to uh, to give a signal to the rest of the the, the bombers to drop the bombs it is, was only a sky marker from okay the the leader has dropped his bomb now you have to drop your bombs also um titanium tetrachloride is uh, uh, very poison so i don't think that guy know what he was doing on that moment and he was filling this chemical bombs um two bomb groups they have to drop also uh, some leaflets and you see there on, on, uh, the leaflet that was used um, and they were dropped at Eindhoven and uh, at uh, Westerwald near Arnhem. Uh, every uh, Monroe bomb, uh, as that bomb was known, uh, was filled with 10,000 leaflets at the number T151. Um, it's typically uh, 10 bombs in a B-17, 20 bombs in the total, a lot of leaflets and I never found one in the Netherlands. Never no. saw one. It's very strange, but they are dropped uh, uh, on, on the 17th. And now the P-47s. Also the same uh, fragmentation bomb, the 260. Two bombs uh, uh, under each aircraft. Um, they used also the, the cluster M4. And the M4 had uh, three fragmentation bombs, M40. And that's also... The, the same 20 uh, pounds of fragmentation bomb only with a parachute unit. Um, they didn't like this uh, type of uh, clusters because uh, a lot of times the, the the parachutes opens during the flight and if, when the parachute was opened, the, the fuse was armed and uh, a lot of uh, uh, explosion have occurred in the, in the past, but they, they were used uh, on the 18th of September by the 56th uh, bomb group. The picture on the right is somewhere in uh, in uh, Southeast Asia, but then you have an idea how the employment was of these uh, small uh, fragmentation bombs. Um, some fighters that were only this from the 9th Air Force, they uh, they dropped uh, general purpose bombs of uh, 250 pounds and uh, the general purpose bombs of 500 pounds uh, to under each aircraft. Uh, so. Each wing had one, um, but they have also used on the 18th of September uh, the chemical bomb 100 pounds filled with white phosphorus. Each uh, P-47 had two of these bombs uh, under his wings, uh, and in the, on the right uh, that's uh, with a sky radar somewhere in Vietnam. But you see the effect when uh, a chemical bomb with, filled with white phosphorus uh, will be detonated. Um, it's not so fine, I, uh, I have to understand. Mm. And also the napalm bombs that were used, 
on the 7th of September by the 56th uh, fight group in the uh, Apeldoorn area. And um, the fire bombs filled with napalm is in uh, the normal uh, uh, drop tank eh, from paper, 108 gallons. And they, uh, they had two igniters uh, with white phosphorus to ignite the napalm. Uh, used in one area in the in the in the Netherlands and as far as known uh, only in the Apeldoorn area. And then the, the Holy Moses rockets, uh, the five inch high velocity aircraft rockets uh, used um, uh, on the 18th, 20th and 23rd of September by the 406 fighter group from the 9th Air Force. Um, and they did it more for uh, Flag depression. So they were circling around and they did it also with the bombs, uh, hoping that the flag was uh, shooting at them. And uh, as, as I saw uh, the flag shooting, they uh, they dived on it. So that was, in my opinion, these pilots were real cowboys. So now the operation order. Uh, it was Operation uh, 637. Um, with field order uh, number 1178 sent on the 16th of September at uh, 23 hours 05 Bravo time. So that is the still double British summer time. And on the 17th in the morning at three o'clock, they changed the time from double British summer time to British summer time. Right. And it's, it's in some documents, you see that there was some a miss up in time just in that morning of the 17th. But uh, the field orders uh, started with the the lines you can read here. Eh? The eight air force will attack the flag batteries and installations listed below in support of Allied operations on the 17th of September 1944. And then you get a, a long, long list on the tail tailex with all kinds of information. And the most important you see here, the targets, eh? the, the main points of impact. Uh, were marked with six digit coordinates on a sheet GSGS483. That's a map one on, on 50,000. So very small uh, to mark. And that was a little big uh, complaint by the pilots and the navigators to find the real location by this, uh, these sheets. The zero hour, there's the time over target on the 17th was uh, uh, 0900 hours British summer time. And there was one hour delay with the, the, the Dutch of a difference, I mean. So in the Netherlands, it was then 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, and the, the, the last attack could be at 11.30, so 12.30 Dutch time. So they have, uh, they could bump between 9 o'clock and 11.12. Uh, 11, um, and the bombing, and now you get it, normally you had to, large units this was the uh, units of six aircraft that was desired and the most were six aircraft units uh, of flights that bombed sometimes 12 but so a little bit uh, of small uh, units of aircrafts um, instead of uh, complete bomb groups that have to bomb target so so just to interrupt so we're, we're talking now already about the eight that the, the, the units going doing something different to what they were normally doing. They're, they're, they don't normally use 150,000 scale ground maps. They don't normally fly in sixes or twelves. They normally fly in, in, in different, in, in bigger formations. So this is suggesting to me, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, that this is being planned by the people who are normally on the ground. This is coming from the, 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 the ground forces planning this rather than it being done by, you know, we talk about other operations, the people at the top, the Doolittles and the Casadas and people like that who, who kind of know what they're doing. We've talked recently, Anton, about Operation Cobra and some of the bombing in, involved in that. This, this, this. I mean, it's, it sounds a cliche given how much else went wrong with Market Garden. But this doesn't sound a very well put together plan from, from my point of view. Yeah, this, uh, it's correct. Uh, it's only the, the, the big difference was the, uh, you see it in, in yellow. Eh? Uh, they have to identify the, the targets eh? and they have to, to make a, a good visual run. Um, and they have to take care that uh, the bombs do not fall in, uh, in built up areas because they know it was in enemy occupied territory. 
And I think that that was also one of the reasons they used only uh, small formations of aircraft. Mm. And also because uh, a lot of this, uh, this uh, targets were small flak units of two centimeter guns, etc. But it, it, it was so, what I have uh, read in the documents, a lot of uh, uh, bombardiers and uh, they complained about the, the pressure, preparation time they had. Uh, and also the available of the target maps, etc., or the not available of target maps. Yeah. Um, and you see that um, they have to uh, uh, maybe get two hours delay in the air. So the exact uh, time over target could change, and that they changed it from nine zero or zero nine hours to uh, zero nine thirty in the air. So wow. it is all hush hush operations. Yeah, well, brilliant. I, I, I'll have you carry on. People, people are loving it. They've never heard this information before. So, um, and your English is faultless. So, uh, okay, keep on going. You. We love it. Um, now this will say uh, the most of the people will not say this something, but uh, the target was uh, eighty aiming point for light guns, ninety for heavy guns. That were the, the large areas. Um, they have. 18 aiming points for uh, enemy troops in the Reichswald. So there's the big forest on the, the border of the, uh, the Netherlands and in Germany. Uh, they have one aiming point for the for guns in the woods at Somme. So that is near the landing zone and the, the dropping zone uh, from the 101st Airborne Division. Uh, three flag positions at the bridges at Moedijk and Wolfhazen. And you will see that later. That was a big disaster. The enemy troops in the buildings near the landing and drop zones of the first airborne division. Mm. You see that, uh, um, yeah, I know all these places in the Netherlands, but uh, you see 18 by the Reichswald, Kruisbeek too, etc., etc. Uh, uh, you see a lot of uh, areas was one uh, flag position, some were two, some were three, um, like Airfield Dale had a five. Uh, Oosterbeek should it have three, but uh, eventually there were uh, two, etc., etc. Um, and you see the airfields at Eindhoven and Volkel, and they dropped a little bit. Was you have a lot of more aiming points, but we'll see it on the map here. Um, the first bomb division, they had to do with the aiming points in the pink areas. So the you know, on sheet 45, 46, and 51. And the third bomb division, they did the, the aiming points in the green map areas. And yeah, these are the areas where the, the flights were coming over from uh, uh, later on with the, with, with the para, paratroopers and the gliders. So the, the northern route was more about the green uh, one. And the southern route was more that uh, uh, going to Eindhoven. Um, as said before, when they were doing the formation, and that's I can give a presentation of uh, formation of uh, heavy bombers, and most of you know that was a not so easy uh, task. But when they were in the air, around eight o'clock in the morning, they get. Uh, 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 Announcement to uh, to get in a uh, half hour extra flying uh, flying time, and I have uh, put in two uh, examples. You see on the uh, the last one they make a kind of dog leg. Eh? They, uh, yeah. they did the extra crew, and the other one they, they circled around uh, uh, to get uh, this half hour fly, uh, flying time. Uh, the first ones get in the air at five thirty six o'clock in the morning. And they, they have to do the, the bombing at um, 9.30. And it is not so far from uh, the coast of England to the Netherlands. So mm. they did a lot of flying time before they could uh, drop the, the bombs. Um, and uh, if you know, uh, the normal formation uh, they did uh, the bombing was with the 36 uh, aircrafts in a, in a bomb group. And this is done is uh, about uh, also in September 44. Uh, a formation of uh, a bomb group was uh, three bomb squadrons and, uh, and, and they're flying about four miles from each other. 
And in, in that kind of formation, they, they're going from the, the English coast uh, to the Dutch or the Belgian coast, uh, each after each other. Um, and only the, the lead and the deputy lead of uh, one formation had a northern bomb site. So not every um, heavy bomber had a an, an northern bomb site uh, on board, only the lead and the deputy lead, and the rest has to drop. Um, yeah, on the on the lead, um, they dropped overall between twenty thousand six hundred eighty feet, so that is almost seven kilometers high, and, and nine thousand nine hundred feet, so about three thousand uh, kilometers. Um, and the first bomb was dropped at nine thirty one, and the last one at eleven twenty seven, British summer time. Um, and we see, we'll see later how many uh, bombs that were dropped. Uh, that picture on the right is the only one I uh, have found taken from an airplane, seeing live bombing of his neighbor. So that's a real uh, picture of from the 17th dropping bombs in the morning. Okay, then the roots of the first bomb division. Um, the first uh, going from the uh, Klexenland Sea to Belgium was the uh, 94th uh, Combat Bomb Wing. That were 139 aircrafts uh, from uh, three, three bomb groups. And they flew uh, to Ostend in, uh, in Belgium, then to Nijvel, and from there to uh, Nederweert in the Netherlands. And Nederweert, that was the initial point. So they start the bomb run with a little bit of evasion actions, if necessary, to the Rijkswald. So that is on the border of the Netherlands and, uh, and Germany, on the southeast of uh, Nijmegen. And after that, oh, one, one example, um, when they did the bomb run, dropped the bombs, they made a the right turn and going back, almost the same uh, route they come in. And this is an example of the mm -hmm. 457th uh, bomb group. And you see the red one, a little bit uh, different as planned, but yeah, that's uh, real life. Eight minutes after the, this bomb group, the 40th uh, combat bombing was coming in with uh, 100 aircraft. So that's a complete bomber stream coming in. The same route to Neerpelt, and from there, they, they separated to Volkel Airfield and to Graven, to the, the, the famous bridge at Graven. Uh, at the initial point, they're starting to, to wave out of each other in, uh, in six uh, aircraft formations. Then six minutes later, the 31st combat bombing. Uh, and they had the initial point at Leopoldsburg in Belgium. And there they split out to Sun and uh, to Oselbeers. And, and the other one, they're going to turn out and then start the uh, bomb run to Sertogenbos and Hedel. And all these airplanes made also a right turn uh, back on the same route back to England. So it was very busy in the air, I think. And the last one from the uh, first bomb division was the first combat bombing, 84 uh, aircraft, and they uh, they flew to Vliegveld Eindhoven, so uh, Eindhoven Airfield, with uh, 84 aircraft. Are, are any of these routes similar to routes these bomb groups had flown before, or are they completely new for this operation? Because obviously, by this point of 1944, they're their daylight bombing targets across Europe. So, is it based on normal routes, or is it completely different? Uh, Completely, completely new. Okay. Because uh, yeah, the initial points uh, from Be in in Belgium and, and and in the south of the Netherlands were all directed uh, with an uh, a bomb run to the north. Yeah, and normally they have to uh, they flow to uh, to Germany. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Um, now some examples of the bomb attacks. And as said before, I I cannot. Uh, uh, show them all because then we have a couple of hours uh, this evening. Um, the first one is the Rijkswald and surroundings. So on the uh, on the uh, 
you see here in red uh, the aiming points and uh, the dots uh, is where the bombs have fallen um, they dropped uh, 3081 fragmentation bombs on this uh, on, on, on this uh, flag positions um, and on the they thought German troops in in the Rijkswald so in the in the in the rice forest on the on the border of the Netherlands and in the in, in Holland and on the picture you see uh, the dots after the after explosion of the of the fragmentation bombs. Uh, Grave Bridge, uh, a very famous bridge. Um, on the picture you see uh, at the top where the the bridge is going over the the Maas River. You see some smoke, and that's the smoke from the destination from the first <laughs> uh, uh, load of uh, fragmentation bombs uh, dropped by the first uh, six B-17s. Uh, and the picture uh, is taken from the B-17 from the, the second wave. Uh, in the green area, you see uh, the, and I've. Uh, Large it a little bit in the in, in the grate, and maybe if you take a good look, you can see the bombs falling. But you have to take a magnifying glass to see this. But uh, in in the in the blue areas, you see some bombs falling uh, to the ground. Uh, and on the right, you see a, a picture of one of the the bombs uh, hit one of the buildings near the bridge. Um, and and the in the long white stripe, you see. Uh, on the picture is uh, one of these uh, sky markers. Right. Mm -hmm. And within the, the white lines, you it's a little bit difficult to see, but you see all these dots of the, the bombs that have detonated uh, near the bridge. And the aiming point is the, in the red circle. Um, so only the, the first load has uh, hit the target. The rest was uh, yeah, to the north. And this is a picture is made at the 17th and there are also uh, some pictures made on the 19th and then you see on the road a lot of uh, allied vehicles uh, going uh, to Nijmegen. Mm. Uh, Eindhoven airfield, uh, also Osterweer, Beers and Sun. Um, in red the aiming points, uh, in green some areas that uh, have been bombed but there were not an aiming point. Um, and Eindhoven, you see, the, they had a lot of uh, aiming points for flak on the on the airfield themselves. Um, and in the in the in the top of the, the, the map you see the aiming point for uh, the sun sun area near the uh, landing grounds of the 101st Airborne Division. Uh, one picture of Eindhoven. You see some bombs falling in the in the green area, and in the red you can see some detonation um, dropped on Eindhoven airfield. So on the flag positions, more than two thousand fragmentation bombs, and one hundred and fifty two cluster bombs, and ten leaflet bombs. Um, and, and what you see, uh, all the all the uh, bomb craters on the ground, that is from the Royal Air Force bombardment uh, from the Bomber Command on the. Uh, August and September 1944. So right. there's nothing to do with 17 of September. Um, but also some uh, built-up areas uh, at Kobik at Sales that is near the airfield were hit by uh, fragmentation bombs. And in the red you see the detonation of the bombs, and in white you can see the dots of the the, the first bombs that have detonated. And and in uh, in sales, 18 people were killed by these uh, fragmentation bombs. Um, and you see one of the pictures of the, the burial of uh, 17 of them. Uh, yeah, that is uh, what they call in, in these days collateral damage, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the lead flights from the 306th, uh, they had an, an aiming point at the Volkel. Uh, but they couldn't find the, uh, the aiming point, so they moved to Eindhoven airfield and dropped uh, some 330 uh, uh, fragmentation bombs and uh, 
10 uh, Lieberman bombs. Uh, on the left, you see Volkel, also bombed on the, on the, in August and uh, September before. And on the right, you see Eindhoven. But in blue, you see on the script, uh, in, in the titling, you still, still see Volkel. But they bombed Eindhoven, and that is one of the things we we found something uh, sometimes with we doing an investigation that all the information on the pictures is not correct. So uh, right. the guy who uh, who made uh, the script for the title didn't know that they bombed Eindhoven, except of all. So you have to know the layouts of the airfields to be yeah. sure that uh, that the picture is okay. Now we have a song uh, in the north of uh, this uh, uh, area with enemy troops uh, were the landing fields of the 101st and some flights of uh, the 303rd and the 384th bomb group they have to the bomb within this uh, in this uh, half square um, here you see the detonation of uh, 540 fragmentation bombs uh, dropped by the 308 bomb group uh, on, on the on the edge of the the field. Uh, I do not know if that has some effects. I really do not know. Uh, a little bit later, you see another uh, flight of the 384 dropping uh, 180 fragmentation bombs and uh, sea flight. Uh, so six aircraft. Did a second bomb run because they uh, couldn't aim at the first time, and they dropped also 180. And then you see them on the right. Um, and uh, the B uh, flight, uh, and, and you see B squadron, but the squadron is exactly should be 12 aircraft. They dropped uh, at the misproof uh, buildings uh, of farmer house, and at the top you see the the target area and in the bottom you see where, where the star is where they they drop the bombs so uh, a little bit <laughs> out of the area where, he, where they have the bomb and then we go to the roots of the third bomb division um, the 92nd uh, wing uh, from two bomb groups they had the easy one they started awkwardness and that was the start of the bomb run over the North Sea to the, the islands at Schouwen Duiveland and the, and the, and the Zierikzee and Zijpen. Then a left hand turn and then back to Oxford Nest. So this was an easy run. Um, back and, uh, and, 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 and forth. 66 aircraft. The next one was the 93rd A wing from uh, three bomb groups starting at Southwall. Going to Egmond aan zee, then over Volendam, over the Zuiderzee, or IJsselmeer, then to Stroe, and Stroe was uh, the initial point. And then they have the, the targets uh, at the Tillewaard area, Isle of Dordrecht, the bridges at the Moerdijk and at Numersdorp. Um, and another one is uh, eight and three minutes later is the 92nd B wing and the 4th A wing and they're going over the same area to Stroe and then to Doeveren and Doeveren was the initial point going to Keizersveer, the bridge at Keizersveer and then to the Moerdijkbrug. And here you see an example flown by the 486th. You see they, uh, they flow uh, over the IJsselmeer to the initial point at Stroe. And then uh, after the bombing, they're going to the rally point at, at Leur. And then all these six, the, the flights of six airfields come together again and going as a bomb group uh, back to England. And here you, you see as an example, a complete route that was flown by this uh, bomb group. After that, three minutes later, you get uh, the four B wing, 99 aircrafts. They're going to, uh, from Southall to Egmond aan Zee, then over the North Oostpolder to Meppel, Meppel to Almelo, initial point was Groenlo, and from there to the Hoge Veluwe. Uh, Ressen and Lent, that's near Nijmegen and Nijmegen themselves. 
En de Hoge Veluwe is dus uh, een uh, little bit north of Arnhem. After that, 11 minutes, minutes later, the 72nd uh, of 72 aircraft of the 45th combat bomb wing, Egmond and Zee, Noordoostpolder, Meppel, Almelo, Initial Point, Bruno, Hoge Veluwe, Haarskamp, Velgenbroek, Looveer en Oosterbeek. En Oosterbeek, everybody knows where that is. Uh, complete route flown of one of the bomb groups, the uh, 96th. Uh, after the initial point of after the bombing, they're going a little bit to the northwest and then back to uh, Egmont and Zee and from there over the North Sea back to England. And in red you see uh, that they had a little bit of dog lag uh, in, the, in the bomb run. Um, they couldn't see the aiming point in the first time. So they make, make a, a, bomb, a second bomb run, and you see in red the second bomb run that they did on that, that moment. But on the moment they did the second bomb run, there were a lot of other aircrafts in that area. So uh, sometimes they have some uh, evasion actions to get no uh, collision in the air. And that is, uh, happened uh, several times in, the, in this morning. And then uh, another one, 39B wing uh, from uh, two bomb groups, 17 of uh, 79 aircrafts to Groenlo initial point, from there to Laagsoeren, also Oosterbeek, Wolfhese, Wageningen, Ede, and the Hoge Veluwe. And here you see another example of how the uh, complete uh, route was flown by. Uh, the 388 bomb group. Now some examples, and this is, uh, I think, the most interesting ones. Um, Isle of Dordrecht, the Moerdijk bridges, uh, Oude Horselpolder and the Hollands Deep. The Hollands Deep is that uh, big waterway. Uh, they dropped um, 2,793 fragmentation bombs, MW-81, and 152 clusters. On, the, on these targets, and you can see on the on the dots on the map uh, where they hit the ground. Uh, a couple of pictures. This is uh, the release of 170 fragmentation bombs dropped by uh, one flight. Uh, and in the on the picture, you can see uh, the railroad bridge of the the Moerdijkbrug. And uh, this bridge was also bombed in the night of the 6th, 16th on the 17th by Bomber Command. Um, and on the title you can see uh, that they were flown, uh, flying on uh, 19,500 uh, feet high. Uh, and here you see the impact of the bombs. Hmm. This is what you saw here. This is the bombs going down. Yep. And here you see the impact. Uh, this is a nice one, 170 uh, uh, typing uh, failure in the, in, in the text I see, fragmentation bombs dropped. Uh, and you see that uh, one of these bombs had a, a scarf on it. Uh, it is a, a cloth of a very bright color uh, because they didn't use uh, sky markers. But this is from a, a picture uh, taken from the the B-17 of the deputy lead. Uh, and this was a marking for the rest of the, the, the bombers to drop the bombs because they could see this very bright color scarf on one of the bombs. Wow. Yeah. Never saw it before. And here you see the detonation of the, the bombs. And in, in the blue is the, is the aiming point. That's a, a little flag position of uh, three, two centimeter anti-aircraft guns. So they just hit it, um, not so bad. Then Dale Airfield, uh, that was the, uh, the airfield for the 52nd uh, Lowland Division. Yeah. But uh, that never happened. And uh, these flag positions were uh, bombed by 1,556 fragmentation bombs, only in the in the yellow the circle on the on the 
the other one that was uh, put on the spot, but the real uh, flag position was in the north. So if you make a six digit uh, uh, map figure and you, uh, you set one figure wrong, yeah, you get <laughs> wrong uh, aiming point. Mm. Um, two examples of uh, pictures that, uh, taken during the, the bombardment. In red, you see the detonation of uh, fragmentation bombs. And in white, you see the clouds from uh, bombs that already had detonated. And also here, so uh, a lot of uh, craters on the airfield from the uh, um, bombing by Bomber Command before. And in blue, you see an outline of a, a large, heavy anti-aircraft uh, position. And in green, if you take a good look, you see some uh, uh, fragmentation bombs uh, going to the earth. How are we doing with the time, uh, Paul? It's fantastic. No, I just just keep going. It's brilliant. Yeah, it's I'm loving it. Okay. Uh, then the Lovia. Uh, Lovia is um, uh, 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 it's a, a ferry point uh, in in the in that waterway, and the aiming point of the the two flag positions were on the on the east side, and I have enlarged the the flag positions. You see the the three little uh, dots in the in the in the uh, in blue outlines. And uh, you can imagine if you're flying with an, uh, an aircraft at 70,000 feet, you see nothing. Yeah. Um, on the picture, you can see uh, the first load of um, fragmentation bombs uh, going down. Um, and here you see the detonation uh, of these bombs, uh, the first uh, going in the water and on the, on the north side of the, of the, of the ferry. Uh, and then you see uh, the, uh, all the bombs uh, detonate. Um, if you take a good look with the yellow uh, arrow, that's uh, the ferry. It's on the south side. Right. On the moment that, that the bombs were detonated, of uh, and detonated on the on the grounds, and there was also a, a little ship in the in the on the north side, completely uh, demolished and three people killed. Um, and and this is in the the second bomb load that uh, detonated you see it is uh, more to the to the west so uh, not on the aiming point also uh, 90 fragmentation bombs this was the the high element they did the second bomb run because uh, they couldn't aim the first time and you can see the ferry is on the north side so between uh, the first bomb run and the second um, this ferry has uh, going to the north side, I think, uh, to, to give some uh, first aid on the, the casualties on the on the ground. But uh, locally, everybody uh, tells and uh, writes about three bombardments. But uh, the eight Air Force only had two times six B-17s that dropped the bombs, and then um, some uh, somebody in the Netherlands. Found out, found out by an Imperial War Museum uh, movie that the third attack was not a, a bomb attack by the by the Air Force, but was an, uh, a rocket propellant attack by Hawker Typhoons of uh, 1A2 Squadron of the uh, second half around uh, 11:30. So that was uh, later than the bombardments. And I have, uh, uh, if you see. With the arrow, the, the ferry is still on the north side, uh, and you see it still from the film, and you see the, the rockets going. And this uh, one of the rockets uh, hit the bomb shelter, and, and 20 civilians in the shelter were killed. So, not by uh, a fragmentation bomb, but, but one uh, of the British rockets. And everybody was also always telling there were three bombardments, but it seems it was a and uh, a rocket attack by uh, by typhoons. So uh, another mystery solved. Yeah, no, I, I just want to say your 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 work is absolutely outstanding. I, I've had some brilliant guests, but this is just the detail is just extraordinary. So um, and people are saying so in the comments. So uh, br absolutely brilliant stuff to restart my uh, my schedule. So uh, back to you again. It's just okay. enthralling. Uh, then we get Resilent and I'm Um you see the aiming points. Um, 
and in, in the pictures that is uh, uh, two times they have found the bomb there, fragmentation bomb. You, you can see uh, one of the bombs is laying two meters below uh, uh, the first surface and they, when they dig it up. And the other one is just just behind uh, uh, of a hit by a plow of a farmer. So we, sometimes they're going deep, the bombs, and sometimes uh, the, the UXOs and the other, way, other times they're lay, laying 20, 30 centimeters deep. Um, one of the pictures of two, uh, two pictures um, by 12 B17s, they dropped 359 fragmentation bombs uh, on, on this um, flak position. Uh, and the flak position was uh, still firing on the moment they were, they were bombed. Um, none of the aircraft was, uh, was hit, but it was, uh, yeah written in the in the documents that they were still firing at them on the moment they they dropped the bombs on this uh, flag position um now we get wageningen wageningen was also a, a ferry uh, an aiming point to our uh, uh, a light flag position at the red uh, dot that sh should be bombed by uh, six b-17s of the 49th uh, c2 flight um, here you see the bombs uh, going down and um, released at the uh, Renkum. Um, and here you see the detonation of the, the, the bombs in the Sahara district. Um, 36 people were, uh, were killed. In the, in the pink circle you see the, the aiming point where the flag position was. Um, this was a mishap in the in the automatic pe uh, pilot of the B-17. Um, from the 36 people that were killed in this Sahara district, from one uh, of the women, no remains have been found till now. But uh, she's still uh, uh, missed. But very very sad. Uh, I think 100 meters. Uh, out of the uh, aiming point, this uh, mm. this bombardment, and then we go to Holfezen. Um, I see the text is not completely in the in the picture, but uh, most of you know where uh, the the Sayark institution at Holfezen uh, should be bombed, of it has been bombed, um, and that was near the landing grounds of the first airborne division. Um, Prior to the bombardment, and, uh, there was an inquiry by uh, a senior officer of the United States Army Air Force. Uh, I do not know who it is and if he was from a wing or from bomb group or from a, a division or higher. But he, he phoned uh, um, to the 1st Airborne Division and he had spoken with uh, Lieutenant Colonel Charles McKenzie. Uh, as you know, he was the chief of staff. Yeah. Uh, with the question, do we have to, to bomb this uh, built-up area at Wolfhazen? Uh, because in the order was, as I said, no built-up areas. Um, and the answer of Mackenzie was yes, because it is near our landing uh, zone. Mm. And the US officer has replied, okay, then we will bomb, but on your head be it. Or better said, it's your responsibility. Yeah. Only uh, if somebody knows who this uh, high-ranking officer was, I'm glad to know, but I don't know. Yeah, that's intriguing. Yeah, no, it's, uh, this is amazing, amazing detail. Okay, uh, this is uh, one of the, the pictures uh, taken by uh, one of the bombers of the 34th uh, Bomb Group. That was the first mission of the 34th with uh, B-17s. They uh, always flow with uh, b 21s 24th, and it was the first with V17s. And yeah, some have made no pictures because they forgotten to open the, the shutter in the airplane for the cameras, etc. Um, on this picture, it said that they dropped uh, uh, fragmentation bombs, but that's not correct. That this is a uh, 100 pounds general purpose bombs released in Salvo. Um, and here you see. Um, the detonation on the institute by this uh, uh, oh, you see the smoke from the, the bombs dropped uh, three minutes before 
And in the in the red area, you see the first detonation of uh, fragmentation bombs near the railway line. Um, you can see it there in the over the railway line, and you see another detonation uh, of a lot of uh, um, 100 pounders uh, on the institute. Dropped by 21 uh, B-17s, 204 fragmentation bombs and 478 general purpose bombs and 83 civilians were killed uh, by this bombardment. A lot of uh, people were uh, patients and others were uh, from the staff. And uh, yeah, a most famous uh, uh, oblique uh, aircraft uh, picture from yeah. 17 September. You, you see the uh, the gliders on the ground, but you can also see the smoke still uh, rising from the the institute, and that's still from the, the bombardment in the, in the in the morning. Then we go to Aden. Uh, in Aden, the, there were two uh, uh, MPIs uh, for the 490 the D group. Uh, one. Uh, Flag position of two uh, flag guns, two centimeters at the Langeberg barracks, and three light flag guns at the uh, Johan Willem Friso barracks. Uh, now you see the aiming points. If you take a good look, you see on the on the south side of the railroad road Enka. That was a an, an factory, and on the picture you will see that the aiming points were not hit, but the Enka fabric was hit. Here you see the the bombs being released. The first picture, and then in the other one, you see the bomb still going down, 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 and, and forward in the second. Uh, and this is made by uh, Flight 490D1, who did a second uh, bomb run. Um, you see the detonation from the bombs on the factory. Um, and the other one, uh, yeah, because they, uh, they landed 500 meters south of the anchor factory and in the surrounding area. And now the, the big question. 34 bomb group, they bombed Ede instead of Wolfhazen. You see the institute at Wolfhazen, and you see the Ede, and that's uh, eight kilometers more to the, to the west. Um, and this is the, the, you see the first bomb burst of the three B-17s was the first element that dropped 100 uh, 100 pounders on the on the city of Ede, eight kilometers from the aiming point and nobody knows why uh, there's a bit of better picture you see the detonation on the uh, on the complete uh, district uh, 34 civilians killed and this was the so-called morning bombardment because in the afternoon the second tactical air force they dropped with uh, medium bombers the, the barracks in the in Aden again. There where you see on the monument on the left side the, the the people that were killed at the morning bombardment and on the right side the people from the uh, midday bombardment. And this is in the book of the 34th. The technical mission in Germany. Now, as far as, as I know, Ada is in, in, in Holland, not in Germany. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, the, and the ground armies were not moving eastwards, but northwards. Okay. I can understand if you, uh, you're living uh, on the other side of uh, the big ocean, it's very difficult to know where Ada is. Because, uh, yeah, I, I do not know a lot of places in America also. Yeah, true. Yeah, but they, uh, they gave the, the right picture in the book of the detonation of the bombs on the civilian area. Another one from the 34th. Um, they shoot bomb Hazelt, a, a flag position near the Waal River. You see that on the on the left side. But they bombed Gent. And if you you see to the map, I can understand it looks almost the same, but it's 40 kilometers from each other. And the navigator, they, when they told him afterwards that he bombed the wrong, the wrong position, he didn't believe that till he saw the pictures. Here you see the bombs dropping. Um, 
uh, let me see, 175 fragmentation bombs going uh, going down. And here you see the, the detonations. And it was on the uh, workers' house of the, the brick factory. Uh, only the picture is uh, south-north in, instead of north-south. Uh, but when he saw the pictures, then he believed he was uh, out of uh, out of the area. But it was very cloudy, uh, crowdy in the in the air. He told a lot of B-17s crossing each other, and I can't believe that it was um, a very busy morning on on, the, on, <clears throat> on that. Morning. Okay. At last, something about uh, the the first bomb division. 428 aircraft took off. 421 uh, have flown a sortie and 403 bombed. Um, 30 aircraft were damaged by flak. Five aircraft were seriously damaged by flak. And one aircraft crashed by takeoff and all the air crew were killed in action. Uh, <coughs> one aircraft was damaged beyond repair by, by, uh, by a taxi accident. Uh, they had no brakes, uh, so they hit another B-17. Uh, two aircraft were shot down by flak, and this is just in the in the southern area. Uh, one aircraft, uh, one crew member was killed, and that is from the if you see on the picture the the, the kneeling persons, the second from the right, the bold gunner, uh, smeller. He uh, was found on the ground without a parachute. Wow. And I can understand uh, when you are a bolt or a gun and your aircraft is in distress and you have to go out of this bolt turret and then you first have to grab your parachute and then try to get out of the aircraft. The other ones have all uh, made it by parachute. Uh, and one aircraft, but it was not, uh, uh, had an immersion landing in Belgium, but it's repaired and it's later flown back to England. Third bomb division, 448 aircraft took off, 442 uh, flown a sortie, 431 uh, bombed, and they give no, uh, only uh, in, in, in the statistics, the 75 aircraft with flag damage. And now the results. Um, as told before, uh, I think uh, it worked. Um, they had uh, 120 uh, main points of aim uh, of impact. Uh, There's 120 aim aiming points. They attacked 112, and the first bomb division um, at 44 percent, and the third bomb division 49 percent, uh, and they fell within the standard distance of 1,000 feet. Normally, it should be in that time. 67 percent mm. and why is that because normally you have a big formation with one lead bombardier and one deputy lead and now you have a lot of small formations of six aircraft so you have more uh unexperienced bombardiers right yeah yeah and that's one of the the main thing and because the the the, the target areas were very 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 small yeah um Technically, yeah, for the if you know what the circle error problem is, that is when you get 50% uh, within uh, what's the distance of 50% of your your hits within the aiming point. First bomb division was 960 feet, and the third bomb division 930 feet, and normally it should be 750 feet. So also the Circle and a probable is a little bit larger than normally in that time. We, we, uh, just went, we had a question from the Great Dominion about the atmospheric conditions. Now, in the photos you showed, it looked like the weather was pretty clear. We didn't see much cloud in those images. But what about the atmospherics? Is there anything in that that can explain some of the uh, the errors? Um, the, the most of the the past they, they had a, a little of non clouds. Only in the in the in the Arnhem uh, area, uh, more to the northeast of Arnhem, they, they had a lot of uh, cloud area, um, and because they they you, you saw it on that one picture, um, mostly 
they used a little bit of oxygen, not too much because it was not so high they were fl uh, uh, flying. Uh, and they only uh, bond visual with the with, with the not the bond uh, the so not on uh, on radar etc etc. Right. So it was all manual bombing. Um, a little bit of the P forty sevens. Yeah, I ha don't have any pictures of attacks with P forty sevens, but in the in the complete. Uh, uh, Market Garden period, 769 P-70s carried out an attack with bombs or rockets. So this is not the normal uh, uh, strafing, etc., etc. Um, 32 P-47 didn't return to base. 15 uh, came down in the Netherlands, 8 in Belgium, 5 in Germany. And the picture on the, uh, you see on the, on the slide, is one of the crashed uh, P-47s in Germany. And you don't believe it, but he walked away, this pilot. Wow. He only had a little pain in his neck, I believe. Wow. Uh, uh, three were crashed in, uh, in England and one in the North Sea. Uh, and six uh, pilots made a, a precautionary landing. 13 pilots were killed. And one of these, Lieutenant Raymond, is still missing. He is uh, crashed in the flats at Bridgewick. That is uh, four miles from South Minster and still must be there somewhere in the air, in the, in, in the ground. Mm. So he's still uh, missed in action. Now the number of ordnance released by the B-17s. Uh, so 834 wow. B-17s dropped, 22,661 fragmentation bombs M81 and they jettisoned another 79. Uh, they dropped 380 fragmentation bomb clusters. So that is uh, 2,280 20 laps fragmentation bombs. Yep. And they dropped 578 general purpose bombs. And that was only on the Wolf Hazer uh, Institute. And 23 were uh, jettisoned. And of course, uh, the 20 leaflets bombs. And the P-47s, they, uh, they dropped, uh, yeah, you can, can see it by 733 P-47s on these days, 425 fragmentation bombs, uh, 24 fragmentation clusters, 20 fragmentation of the general purpose bombs, 250, uh, 49 uh, smoke bombs with white phosphorus, 21 uh, napalm bombs, 23 uh, five inch rockets. And he, uh, there's one day on the, on the morning of the 17, also 72 general purpose bombs were dropped on Eindhoven aerodrome, but uh, that's not for sure. And last one, the civilian victims. Yeah. As far as we have um, found out, 227 Dutch civilians and two unborn childs were, uh, or children were die. 83 in Wolfhazen, so at the Institute, 40 at Wageningen, uh, 35 at Ede, 19 at Seelst, and then you see uh, on other places, 9, 5, 4, 3, uh, Gravenbridge 1, and in yellow is Amersfoort, and Amersfoort that was by uh, the P-47s, with uh, uh, and the other ones, all the white ones, is with uh, B-17s. And that is the presentation. Well, I mean, absolutely brilliant. Um, the de level of detail has been incredible. So um, to round things off, my question is, you know, we're going to be talking later this week. We've already talked about Market Garden as an operation, the who, where, you know, where it went wrong, who, who how it could have been planned better. It's the, It's an endless discussion. For military historians but from your point of view having studied the the bomb plan is there any way that this bombing plan had influenced the outcome of the battle differently is there something they could have done is i mean you you said before he went live how they did suppress quite a lot of the flak on that first day i mean yes. does that lend weight to the fact that the air transport plan should have brought more aircraft across on the first day and less in the in the in the, in the later <laughs> lift is there any conclusions you'd like to offer us about about how the bombing plan connects with the bigger operation um 
as far as I know, this um, this operation on the 17th had uh, had success because there were um, less casualties uh, in the in the in in, in the aircraft the, from the, the airborne operation themselves on the 17th. Um, but that was only for the 17th, yeah. because on the 18th and later the Germans brought in a mass uh, uh, lot of, of flak. And uh, as you uh, you know, uh, after the uh, the second and the third lift, uh, a lot of bombers and aircraft were uh, shot down uh, because they brought in new flak. But on the 17th, they had success with this uh, B-70 and P-47s operation. So, so what we're saying is, the more aircraft they can get into the the, the, the drop zones on the seventeenth, uh, the better, really, because of that flak being being partially eliminated on 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 the first day. We had a question earlier, which I, I will try and find again. But Great Dominion asked, "Was the intention with the with the bombing to uh, to destroy the flak positions or suppress and kill the crews? Because with the fragmentation." The suggestion was you're not going to necessarily knock out the guns, but it wasn't more about killing the crew and, and suppressing, do you think? Uh, I, I think killing the boom, but also knocking out the guns, because if you see the uh, what the fragmentations uh, with the high velocity they were doing, uh, they, they could knock out the gun also. But mostly it was uh, yeah, trying to get out the guns and also the personnel. If you ask how many Germans were killed on the 17th, by this bombardment, nobody knows. Right. And as far as I know, a little bit more of 400 or 450 Germans are buried in the in the in the Netherlands German uh, um, cemetery at Eiselstein with the date 17 of September. But I say nothing because a lot of uh, are also killed in the in the Zeeland area uh, when they were crossing by ferry over the over the water, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So how how many Germans were uh, killed in action by this B-17 and P-47s? Nobody knows. Okay, thank you for that. Um, Scott Grimwood is asking: Are there still unexploded bombs in the areas from from these from these attacks? Yes, uh, yeah, I defused myself uh, four or five, but uh, every year we we still get uh, UXOs of uh, this kind of two sixties. Um, that were found uh, by uh, by accident, but also by uh, search operations by uh, civilian uh, firms that are doing uh, UXO clearance. Uh, because yeah, we know now by the documents where the the aiming points were and where the bombs were uh, were dropped, and yeah, five to ten percent didn't work. So uh, we still find found them here. And my last question, and thank you for the answer, is is why do you think the bombing campaign with regards to Market Garden has been overlooked by, by most historians. The comment came up, they think it's covered in Martin Middlebrook's book on Arnhem. I have to check that one. But, you know, why do you think, just because it's lots of work, I guess. I mean, it's, it's obviously taken you a lot of time to do this. So I'm, I'm, I'm suppose with Market Garden, there's plenty of other things to look at. There's the leadership aspect, aspect there's the drop zones, there's all the things we know about with the, the German units on the ground. But have you any other particular reasons why you think the bombing has been overlooked? Uh, yeah, it, as you said, it cost me five years of uh, research <laughs> for the book. Uh, I think uh, because a lot of people didn't know that it was happened in the morning, and it is more a question of uh, uh, the statistics. Um, and and the, 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 the most important thing I, I did because in record group 18 in the in the, in the National Air Guards in the, in the, in the US, you can find the strike photos. Mm. And that makes it interesting. And I think nobody, no, not much people didn't know that in record group 18, all these strike photos were available. Well, we can only thank you for, very much for your for your dedication of five years to bringing this information to us. And we're already getting questions about whether or not the book will be available in English. Let, let's hope so at some point. But even if it's not even not in English, the fact all the photos are holding up again there, folks. There's plenty of photos, the information there, the, the, the flight paths, the information about the book. There's a lot in there. Even if you don't read Dutch, there's a lot of information there that you can use to flesh things out. So 
absolutely amazing performance. I, I'm, I'm really impressed with this this show. So thank you very much. I'm just going to take you off screen for a second and bring you back in a, in, a, in a few moments. So, folks, don't forget tomorrow we have two shows coming your way. So Sebastian Ritchie is coming on at 2 p.m. UK time to talk about his findings, the myth about Arnhem, his book. If you haven't got it, is uh this one here i recommend that myth and reality that's one of our shows then we've got neil thornton coming on talking about well the arnhem umbrella we've got krista bergstrom coming on thursday talking about his finding he's a great swedish historian and then on the weekend jos grown is coming on to talk about the 502nd so an american unit in market garden so there, there are five shows um I thoroughly recommend you go out there and study this this campaign in more detail. There are still aspects of Market Garden that are worth investigating, and the bombing uh, is definitely something to, to, to get your teeth into. But I'm going to bring Anton back in to say good evening. So brilliant. Thank you very much. Did you enjoy talking to our group of people, Anton? Yes. Uh, I was a little bit afraid my English was not so good, but uh, I think everybody understands me. I think and, they did. I will ask the publisher if it is uh, possible to get the English version. And we'll, otherwise, we'll try and, get a, we'll try and get a petition. We'll try and get a <laughs> list of names of how many people would buy it in English, and we can we can tell your publisher. So there we are. And so otherwise, folks, you can you can uh, use uh, Google Translate or something. Indeed, like you can that. scan it and read it. But anyway, <laughs> thanks very much, Anton. Okay. So it's Paul Woodard for World War Two TV saying I will see you all again for two shows tomorrow. Thanks everybody for watching. Bye. Okay. Bye bye.